Ishmael, I go to see a simple sailor right before the mast, plumb down to the forecastle, aloft there to the royal masthead. I go to sea as a sailor because they make a point of paying me for my trouble, whereas they never pay passengers a single penny that I ever heard of. I am tormented with an everlasting itch for things remote. I love to sail forbidden seas and land on barbarous coasts. yet had something in it which was by no means disagreeable. 
It was plain that he must be some sort of abominable savage, but Queequeg was a creature in the transitory state, neither caterpillar nor butterfly. Through all his unearthly tattooings, I thought I saw the traces of a simple, honest heart. And in his large, deep eyes, fiery black and bold, there seemed tokens of a spirit that would dare a thousand devils. unassuming authority ordered the scattered people to condense. Every eye was on the wrinkled, white-made preacher. He paused a little, then kneeling on the pulpit boughs, folded his large brown hands across his chest, uplifted his closed eyes, and offered a prayer so deeply devout that he seemed kneeling and praying at the bottom of the sea. This ended in prolonged solemn tones. In such tones, he commenced reading the following hymn, but changing his manner toward the concluding stanzas, burst forth with a pealing exaltation and joy.
As I climbed to the deck at the call of the afternoon watch, I leveled my gaze at the taffrail. Forbidding shivers ran over me. Captain Ahab stood upon his quarter deck. He looked like a man cut away from the stake when the fire had wasted all the limbs without consuming them. His whole high, broad form seemed made of solid bronze, threading its way out from his gray hairs and continuing right down one side of his tawny, scorched face and neck, you saw a slender, rod-like mark, lividly whitish, a scar given to him by the great white whale. So powerfully did the whole grim aspect of Ahab affect me that for the first few minutes I hardly noticed the barbaric white leg upon which he partly stood. A twisted, hideous man, Ahab seemed the embodiment of hatred itself, the very essence of madness. A man obsessed with the destruction of evil itself, even unto eternal damnation. He held up a gold coin. Whosoever of ye raises me, a white-headed whale with a wrinkled brow and a crooked jaw, whosoever of ye raises me, that white-headed whale, with three holes punctured in his starboard fluke, look ye, whosoever of ye raises me, that same white whale, shall have this ounce of gold. Me. Moby Dick, who brought me to this dead stump I stand on now. I, it was that accursed white whale that raised me and made a poor pegging lumber of me forever and a day. I, I, I'll chase him round Good Hope and round the Horn and round the Norway Maelstrom and round the Perdition's Flames before I give him up. And this is what ye have shipped for, men, to chase that white whale on both sides of land and over all sides of the earth till he spits black blood and rolls fit out. Death to Moby Dick, to the last 
I grapple with thee. For hate's sake, I spit my last breath at thee. While stealth chasing thee, thou damned whale, thus I give up the spear. The birds, the birds, they mark the spot.